17th of April, 2013. We was called out to investigate a forest fire. And of course, when we got there, we saw government agents and stuff who told us to secure the perimeter or whatever. And gave us fake details to tell anybody who tried to come close. Now, one of my, you know, one of my colleagues, Jake, you know, we were a little bit annoyed by this or whatever, man. So we passed the, you know, the time just chatting away and all that. And it ain't take long for the government agents to, uh, you know, come up during the conversation we would have. So what do you think they're doing back there? I asked them. Weapon testing, I bet. I doubt that it's weapon testing, man. I would, you know, it would count for the smoke, but... You know, why do that in the middle of the forest? You know, why not do it, you know, somewhere safe, man, out there in the middle of the sea or something, man? Well, if they let you. You know, then my buddy, he got silent after that, man. I wish I'd known what was going on inside his head. I might have tried to stop him if I'd have known what he was thinking. Now, the next day, he wasn't at his post, so I stood alone for the entire morning shift. Now, during my lunch break, he came up to me, and he was different, man. And it wasn't just the fact that his clothes and face was dirty and covered in some kind of slime. It wasn't just how tired he was or even that he was shaking. It was the look up in his eyes. I ain't never seen nothing like it, man. The only way I could describe it is it was like craziness, man, in his eyes. You know, just he had this look of desperation, man, to... To do something, man, you know, just constantly just in battle, man, with this intense fear, man, of, you know, of actually doing it, man. In between, like, you know, he was gasping for breath and stuff, and he said, he said, it's, it's an alien. And any other time, I would have laughed, but just... The way he was looking, man, this wasn't no laughing matter. So I said, what? You mean like the, the little gray men or whatever? And he shook his head. No, no, man, not like that. It was something bigger, man, not, not size, but it was just, it was greater than us, man. More powerful, like, we, had, we ants compared to this thing, man. We ain't nothing compared to this thing, man. And he started to laugh and cry and shake. And I backed away, man. You know, in the next moments, i never forget it, man. He grabbed, you know, the coffee mug from the table and poured it on the floor, slammed it against the table, and took that, cu that, that cup and stuck that thing in his own throat, man. And I jumped forward real quick and tried to stop him, but it was too late, man. Blood just shooting up out my, my man's neck, man. And he grabbed my hand so tight that it hurt. The only, you know, it's like how they, when pregnant, when women giving birth and they squeeze your hand, it was like that, man. And he didn't let go until he had finished choking to death on his own blood. And I didn't move for like 20 minutes, man. You know, even when the other folks seen us and caught up to it, uh, uh, came in there and saw what happened, I, they was trying to, you know, get him help, and I, and I, I still couldn't move. Him. And I was under suspicion for his death, man. You know, of course I was, man. You know how it go on when the government type saw the slam on his clothes. They were even, you know, quicker to convict me for it, man. I guess to try to keep everybody, you know, on the, on the, you know, they ain't want the truth coming out, man. Now, me, I was determined to get to the bottom of this thing, man. I didn't think I could sleep again until I figured out what was going on. Now, they took me to this little room and kept, you know, a guard posted. And had uh, with orders to not let me, don't even let me move too much. And he told me in confidence that he didn't, you know, he didn't believe I was guilty. You know, so I took advantage of that. You know, when enough time had passed... And, and uh, you know, they kind of began to grow complacent because people are only human. I got up and I knocked that man unconscious, man. You know, I might have killed him. You know, I, I don't I don't know for sure, man. I ain't even stopped to think about it long enough to feel any kind of guilt or remorse. I had to get, you know, I had to get to that smoke, man, no matter what. 
Now, after a bunch of, you know, time making my way through them uh, woods, I started to feel vulnerable, man. And not just from the possibility of getting caught by the other, um, the other, um, the other 12 or whatever, or by them government boys. I felt like a million eyes were staring at me, man. Like, just staring at me like they wanted to kill me. And I felt like every little piece of air, man, around me was a... Bro, it was a predator, so, you know, like, I legit felt like I'm in a predator movie, man, and, you know, the predator got that heat vision, boom, 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 y'all didn't watch predator, <laughs> y'all didn't seen the movie, know what I'm talking about, you know, I felt like Arnold, man, and predator just watching me, you know, trying to see if I'm gonna figure out about his secret identity right before he shoot that shoulder laser and blow my head, blow my head off, or blow my arm off, man, and, um, and my dead homie, man, um, his words came back to me, and I felt like a, like he said, like an ant, man, like nothing. And the feeling only grew stronger the closer I got to the smoke. My chest was hurting, my spine was tingling, my forehead was burning. You know, I just felt like, I, I guess I was having a panic attack, man. And, you know, I ain't never had no panic attack or nothing before, man. And I felt like I'm walking through a desert. And I had to breathe slow and deep to calm myself down, but it still wasn't enough. Every step I took felt like I'm walking in quicksand, man, and through the nose and out through the, you know, out through the mouth. I'm just thinking like football, in yeah, through the nose, out through the mouth, one foot in front of the other, man. And finally, I made it to the clearing and I saw what was causing the smoke. And when you see UFOs on TV and stuff, they look like discs or triangles, you know, flashing lights and stuff, and all the things you've seen before. But what was in front of me? I knew without a doubt it was a UFO, even though I ain't never seen anything like it, man. This thing was like, it was something that a human couldn't make. The material it was made from, it just, it just wasn't like nothing that, hum, it just wasn't nothing, like if it was a prop for a movie, yeah. But if this thing really could fly, it's, it's you know, them 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 spy stealth bombers and stuff ain't had nothing on this thing, man. Now I had a little, you know, I ain't had no like real scientific knowledge, man. But I knew that this thing was capable of some of some amazing stuff because it didn't have no wings or you know it didn't have like jets and you know, like so this thing had to fly off of. Just like some kind of nuclear power or some kind of anti gravity power, man. Look at me, you know, it, it couldn't, it didn't have nothing else to make it move. So it had to just fly off some kind of energy boost, man. You know, just looking at it, I, I realized everything we think we know is has been a lie, man. And I couldn't go any further, man. I talked back into I went back into the forest and I sat down and that's when I wrote this, man. That's when I you know, I cuz I want folk to know my story, man. And I want folk to know where my friend died. You know? And if any of them government people find this notebook, you know, uh, or any they hear the story, if any of them hit this fake creepy pasta that I'm making up, you keep it to yourself. Because I don't want nobody else hearing this. And I don't want the truth getting out. Because these humans ain't ready for this, man. They never will be. And I'm going to get up and look inside that UFO. And hopefully I can fly that mug back to their planet. Because I know it got to be some fine alien women. Wait, it got to be some fine alien women out there. And when they see me, boy, they going to they be like, ooh, that's what Earth boys look like. You know, so... If I can figure out how to get that thing running, uh, you know, I'm, I'm, but since the alien, you know, he crashed in the hood, so he probably ain't got no gas in the thing. That's probably why he ended up crashing the mug in the first place. He ain't had no gas in there. But see, when you a real hood Negro, let me tell you something. <laughs> this is how you can tell if you a real hood. If you a real hood Negro, if you can get in your car, and, and like go all and you know you gotta like go all the way across town and your car on E and you don't even you don't even break a sweat man you like that's how you know how if you a real street boy you can get up in that car with it on E 
and go all over the city and don't break a sweat for it. So if you get in your car and your car on E and you be, oh my God, I got to get to the gas station. Oh, man, I'm finna run out again. Then nah, you ain't hood, man. See, a real hood guy, he get up in that car and it could be on, it could be under the E line. Light flashing and everything, beeping. He ain't going to break a sweat. <laughs> oh, man.